Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel and today I'm back again for another Clay Pigeon IKR race video. So today we are actually going to be doing round two of the summer series. So a few clips I'm just showing in the background here is actually from the Friday, the day before the race from testing. So yeah, I thought I'd add in a few clips as I forgot to actually mention it in the intro on the actual day, so I apologise about that. But yeah, we did a bit of testing, just basically trying to get the feel for the track once again after a month. As you can see, there is about four carts just ahead of me, five carts including me here coming into this out of the exit section. As we go down to the hairpin, you see Jack Corwin go down the inside of all of us, so he's just made five cars overtake there, which is absolutely mental to say the least. I had to add that part in. Um, he actually messaged me afterwards about it, saying about it, and yeah, me and Peter's reaction, because obviously we are both in that battle there, were just absolutely stunned. Now we cut to a bit later where I decided to actually commit for the attack here and decided to destroy someone's exhaust pipe and as you can hear from the background I may have broke his exhaust pipe which I'm pretty sure he's not going to be too happy about but nevertheless that was pretty much the end of our Friday test day just before the race now I guess we'll move on to the next day and get ready for the race Yo what's up guys just currently going on a quick track walk. Um, can't be quite quiet because I am quite close to some caravans. Um, they're all still asleep. It's about 6.20 in the morning. So yeah, um, no clue how today's going to go. Got some big news actually. Um, I'm going to edit in another clip in a bit showing what the big news is. But yeah, currently going for a quick track walk once again. It's currently just going down the start of Street. Um, so yeah, every time I walk this track, I always realise how tight it is. Like honestly, there's really not much space down towards turn one, but somehow I still manage to sneak down the inside of some people in towards turn one. So yeah, um, quite interesting to say the least. Quite a nice sunny day here actually. Um, should be sunny all day. Actually, give weather e warnings throughout the weekend. So. Yeah, it's going to be quite good. So yeah, there's actually a really good view from the track just before the S is here. Um, yeah, so we got a pretty big grid today, which is going to be quite interesting to say the least. So um, yeah, there's going to be actually 22 people racing the senior Rotax class, or the class that I'm racing in. So um, yeah, it's going to be a bit hectic to say the least. I've never raced in a class as big as this. So hopefully we're to manage to come out alive, especially in the first lap. So. Yeah, but now we'll cut to a bit later, where I'll show you that big news then. Alright, so boys, the big news that we've got today then, is we got a new Evo engine. Hired it out from the Clay Pigeon Cart Shop this weekend. My old engine's just down there. So, yeah, hopefully we'll have more speed. I've done one practice session in it already, and it felt pretty good. Also, I can actually open the flap completely with this one, so that's quite good. Um, I'm going to be using the helmet cam today. Obviously, can't put a GoPro on the radio um, like I have with my one because I don't have a mount. But yeah, should be good. So I guess now we'll jump into practice then. So here we go for qualifying then. I guess now we'll see what this engine can really do. Obviously, we decided to chuck on a brand new set of tyres. So that is my second set I'm using throughout the season. So it's going to be, well, pretty difficult for the next few races. Obviously, now from September onwards, where we're going to have to use either my round one set or my round two set. So yeah, um, at first I just wanted to take it easy, try and get the tyres up to temp and try and bed them in just a little bit because obviously it's very difficult with brand new tyres on the track. Um, I actually pulled over to the left here and just let everyone through just so and try and get some clean air. We're now going to cut onto lap 7 which is where I actually got my new personal best around this track. So run down the start from the straight using Human DRS, start the lap now, run down towards turn 1, taking it really nicely actually, keeping it nice and tight which is a really good line through there. Now through the S's, actually hitting the curbs very nicely and letting the car run out just hitting the outside sausage curb there. Run down towards the hairpin, tuck it in very nicely, letting it run out nice and wide but not too wide where you hit the grass or anything. Uh, through the horseshoe, I usually like that part, but I actually kicked the back end out just a little too much on the entrance. Through the uh, final corner then we go, literally just touching the curb just as we come to the end of the corner. Run down the start from the straight, and there is my new personal best of a 34.6. 
which is a very good lap compared to my previous personal best. So yeah, that was the end of qualifying. Uh, we actually went P8, which I'm not going to complain about whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I guess now we will head back into the pits and get ready for Heat 1 and try and get the car prepared then. Alright boys, so the new engine is definitely a lot quicker. Um, actually got my new personal best by a long shot. So previously, before that, um, on brand new tyres, my previous best was a 35.2. Um, on the new engine, let's just say it was a uh, 346, so definitely engine much better. Um, I put the GoPro back on by the way, so I'll use that for the heats and the final. Uh, I used the helmet cam for quality, um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to say the least. I got the mic on working as well now, by the way. Um, on the mic on, I actually said I got a 347 on the alpha timings instead of 346, so I won't complain. I gained a 10 somehow, so yeah. I guess we'll just jump straight into the heat then and see how it goes then. So here we go for heat one then. As you can see, we're going to be starting on the outside, which I cannot absolutely stand, honestly. But I guess we'll just have to see what we can do with this and get underway here for the formation lap. So yeah, as you can see, I'm trying to warm up the tyres as best as possible. Luckily, didn't spin this time, which is also a good sign and a good start. But nevertheless, as we flip open the flap, you can actually see the flap now from this GoPro camera angle. Uh, now we can actually fully open it, so I apologise about that. But nevertheless, we go green here at Clay Pigeon Raceway for the first race of the day. Run down the start finish straight down towards Turn 1. We break super late here, try and go around the outside of the car at 75, I think that was said. And as you can see, someone smacks the rear of me here. We actually go straight on in towards the grass here and actually get pushed right back to last, which is an absolute shame to say the least. I smacked the world into frustration, especially I started P8 and then got all the way back down to last place. So now we had to try and play a bit of a clawing back game as we send it down the inside of the 65 cart there. And now we've got to try and carry on and try our best to just try and get back where any result we can really at this point. Obviously the final is where the points all gain, so this will be heat one. So there's still a chance we can get a good result here in the end of the race. But nevertheless, we're going to try and get around this cart 26 as quickly as possible. I probably would have sent it there if it wasn't for the yellow flags coming out. So we did have to back up a bit so we didn't get a penalty for overtaking under the yellows. But nevertheless, we go green once again here. So I go down the inside of the cart 26, try and scare him off the line. He goes a little bit wide. So we're going to try and take that opportunity to go around the outside now through the horseshoe. It's going to be a little bit difficult to say the least, but it is possible. So we hold it around the outside now, send it down the inside of the kink right-hander and make him stick very nicely up another position. Go a little bit wide there, but luckily we get a pretty decent exit nevertheless. Down the start and straight once again. We'll cut into a couple laps there where we catch back up to the back of car 6. Now we'll try and get around him as quickly as possible. We'll try and go around the outside, down the start and straight. It's going to be very difficult to say the least, but we're going to try and hold it and make a move stick very nicely and actually get past another guy there, the cart 54 down the inside in towards turn 1. So that's another few moves made. So just showing that with this engine, I'm a lot more competitive. Obviously, my own engine that I own is actually a Prevo with an Evo kit on it, and it hasn't been rebuilt since 2020 February. So trying this Evo engine that's, well, pretty much recently been rebuilt, absolutely flying down the straights is so much easier and much better to drive. Now we actually get stuck behind the Kart 61 for quite a while of this race actually. We actually get a little bit of a chance around the outside into Horseshoe once again. I outbreak myself, I go a little bit wider and actually let him get past me and I couldn't send it down the inside and just next sweep in my hander. But now we cut onto the final lap where I decided to absolutely just send it, give it all I've got, see what happens send it down the inside into the uh, hairpin and absolutely push them off wide so I do actually pull over and let them back through because that was completely dodgy and I probably would have got penalised anyway for it so yeah um, I guess we managed to make it up to P14 so going all the way back to like P20, P21 I think, something around about there so managing to claw my way back to P14 all the way from the back isn't too bad in one race but nevertheless that is the end of heat 1 and I guess now we just head back nice and slowly back into the pits and I guess be prepared for the next race.
So now we're going to jump straight into the pre-final as I'm an idiot and forgot to vlog in between Heat 1 and the pre-final. I do vlog straight after the pre-final so we will see that as well but I apologise about that. But nevertheless we head out on track then and get ready to, well, try and get a good start hopefully. I mean last time wasn't a good start at all into the S's but nevertheless, new race new uh, grid position so on the outside once again I guess we'll have to see how it goes though and we go green here in clay for the pre-final then run down towards turn one we actually go for the outside here to try and avoid a bit of chaos off the inside really and see if we could try and get any position sadly it didn't quite work but we managed whole position and didn't get sent off into the S's this time we're actually going to go down the inside here of the night four cup which is Patrick who actually holds it very nicely around the outside and has the inside for the horseshoe so I guess I'll just have to conceal for that one but nevertheless we'll try and stay on this rear and try and get past him uh, as soon as possible try and make our way up the grid as best as possible as we come around the final corner then get a pretty decent exit and actually try and go around the outside of him down to the start finish straight around the kink then and actually go down the inside in towards turn one and make a move stick very nicely on him I did see that he tried to battle back you can't really see on the GoPro down the inside here but obviously he knew I was turning so he did concede a little bit which I appreciate but now we've got to try and get past the 61 once again so it's not going to be easy to say the least as he's really good at defending as you know from last race and obviously I did actually send it down inside of him on the final lap last race and did give him a little bit of a push so hopefully we don't do that again and hopefully try and get past him as quickly as possible as cleanly as possible this time but nevertheless we just stick on his rear as best as possible through the S's get a pretty decent exit, try and slipstream him as best as possible and try and go down the inside, scare him offline a little bit like we did with the 26 managed to do that very nicely and we get a very good exit and finally make it past the 61 car so I'm so glad I won't be looking at the rear of that car anymore but now we just have to push on see if we can get any more positions because we've made it up a couple which is very nice but we don't really want to stop there, we want to try and go up as high as possible but sadly that was the best we could do, we couldn't really catch the car ahead so we come across the line in P11 then so we made a couple more positions which was pretty decent so we're going up which is a good sign but now I guess the final is next, starting P11 we'll just have to see how that one goes then Had a bit of contact, got sent through the S's, managed to recover back a couple of positions, which is pretty nice, um, to P14. And then in the pre-final, we actually managed to go, well, up to P11, so more positions made. So now hopefully in the final, we make it into the top 10 at least, that'll be nice. So yeah, um, engine's definitely working a lot better than um, my last one, but I guess now we just have to push it and see what we can do. Also, I forgot to mention, we've had to get the new weights on because I may have lost one on the uh, <laughs> on the track in the heat one. We had tape over, rear bumper came off, but we've got that fixed. So yeah, a lot of hard work, but yeah. So here we go for the final then, jumping in the cart for the final time, starting P11 on the grid and finally for the first time of the day, starting on the inside. So hoping to try and maybe make a couple moves into turn one, obviously being on the inside and all. But um, yeah, I guess we'll start the formation lap now, jump out on track, and see if we can try and have a good start. Obviously, like I said, on the inside is the best place. So now we will cut onto the final corner then of the formation lap, flip open the flap to keep the engine cool, go around the final corner and prepare for the final then, sitting on the back of cart 44, as it is green here at Clay Pigeon Raceway for the final, getting a bit of slipstream from the cart 44 here who actually backs off so it causes me to back off I actually lose a couple of positions which isn't ideal to say the least to be honest I'm not going to lie I'm calling this race the shipping Grand Prix just because before I actually do anything and actually try and make some overtakes I actually ship about every position known to mankind as we head in towards the hairpin then you'll see what I mean a bit later as we start lap 2 but trying to keep on the back of the cart 67 just ahead of me who actually got around me and the cart 61 just ahead of him 
I may have spoken to you soon about him, obviously saying I don't have to see the back of him anymore. Well, I guess that might have been a lie. Um, nevertheless, so we try and slipstream these guys as best as possible and try and keep with them as we start lap two of this race, running down towards turn one once again, trying to keep with them. As you can see, it's all really close at the moment from last all the way up to first. So we still have a chance this one. We get a pretty poor exit out of the SSO, which is an ideal to say the least. We actually sit back on the 61 then after the 67 gets around 61. Now we actually get a pretty poor exit as we have to concede here from the 44 who gets a poor exit as well. We get actually sent down the inside of Henry then who makes it around me and also Patrick who goes down the inside of me into the S's and that's what I mean about the shipping race because literally I ship about every position before actually trying to you know do some proper overtaking and try and fight my way up. But nevertheless, I guess now we have our work out for us even more than before, so we'll try and sit on the back of Patrick, and, well, last time we got past him down the start from the straight, so maybe we could try that again as we come out of the final corner then, and try and get a very good exit, get a little bit of slipstream, tuck it to the outside, through the kink, going down the start from the straight, and we make a move stick on him very nicely down the inside in towards turn one. Next is Henry, just ahead of me, and I'd actually like to say Henry has improved massively, since the beginning of him starting to play RKRs. Um, obviously, at the beginning, you would see him go wide at a couple corners and I would be able to get past him easily. And obviously, that was with my old engine as well. Um, now he's actually defending a lot better here. As you can see, holding the racing line a lot better, not panicking and going defensive all the time, you know, just holding his line. But that's just going to make it harder for us now, so we're just going to have to try and find a place where he least expects us to send it down inside or something. As we head in towards turn 1, obviously usually he goes wide here, so I was expecting that again, but as you can see, he keeps it very nicely, both laps in a row there, and actually continues to do it, so I have to try and find a different place to get him here. As you can see, I try and get a pretty decent exit out of the S's, try and go down the inside of him, in towards the hairpin, and he just keeps his cool, he doesn't panic and go completely wide like a couple of people have today, when I've tried that move, so... Now uh, I'm really thinking, okay, I need to try and find a way around because I've tried to scare him off the racing line twice and that hasn't worked, so don't really know how I'm going to do this now as we get a pretty decent exit out of the S's once again, get a little bit of slipstream, and we're going to go down the inside of the hairpin this time. We were already committed, so we made the move stick very nicely up another position, which I can't complain about whatsoever. And now we're back to our good old friend, Cart61, just ahead of us, so <laughs> I guess we're going to have our work cut out once again. Um, I guess this will probably be the only position I might be able to gain now, unless I can get around him really quickly. Not too sure how I'm going to do that, obviously I've struggled all day getting past him, so getting past him in the final is just going to be just as hard. Nevertheless so, we get a pretty decent exit out of the final corner, get a little bit of slipstream. Going to try and go around the outside, down the start, finish straight, but he gets, you know, pretty good uh, run down there. He panics a little bit and goes defensive, which leaves him vulnerable down the inside as he goes a little bit wide as we keep it clean through the S's there and only make contact just coming out of the S's which isn't ideal and Ashton there on the inside actually uh, breaks down has a little bit of a problem with his exhaust I think got popped off by another driver and that moves us up another two positions because we also got past the 61 in that kerfuffle um, so yeah now we are up to P10 uh, sadly a little bit later on in the race um, we actually do lose the position so move down to P11 which isn't ideal but nevertheless, we're going to come around the final corner then, and we are going to take P11. Uh, we actually did finish P12 in the race, but someone actually got disqualified as the guy who took off Ashton's um, the exhaust pipe actually got disqualified for, well, apparently doing it with a progression. All it says on there is driving contact, so yeah, um, not ideal for him, but that moves us up to P11 in the final, which isn't the best result, but bearing in mind in Heat 1, we went all the way back to P20. To claw back up in the final to P11, I'll take that any day of the week. So yeah, that is the final at Clay for round two of the summer series then. that time of the day finish the final this bad boy is about to go <laughs> it's so sad it was so quick as you saw we had a very good race to be fair um didn't have a great of start but we managed to claw it back get a couple of overtakes and i think we made a few positions i'm not too sure where i finished i'll put it on the screen now um but yeah pretty decent race got a few overtakes throughout the day 
I'll take it. Um, bearing in mind, it was all going wrong at the beginning, so yeah, I can't complain at all. I definitely need to get myself one of these. Um, probably won't be hiring one again if I will ever be getting one. Well, a proper Evo engine, it'll probably be my own, so yeah, next time I'm going to be back on that bad boy though. <laughs> Shame, but yeah, I'll take it. So yeah, I'm going to leave this video here, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. But thank you for watching, and goodbye. So just quickly before I end this video, I would like to give a massive shout out to Slow Motion Karting. As you can see, he made these epic slow motion shots of me from last Clay Pigeon Raceway IKR, um, and also made this little edit. I'll leave all his contacts and uh, socials in the description below. If you want clips like this, you can hire him for the day, and he will take clips like this and put together a little edit. So make sure to go check him out, and if you want any work like this done, then make sure to give him a call. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave this video here. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe. But thank you for watching, and goodbye.